This training manual introduces the piezo ICSI technique using a piezo micro manipulator for the improvement and standardization of intracytoplasmic sperm injection techniques. This manual preparation was supported by the Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development program. The equipment adds a piezo micro manipulator to the system for conventional ICSI. In the following explanation, the piezo micro manipulator is referred to as the PMM. Of course, conventional ICSI is possible even if a PMM is attached. Regarding the injector, use of a pneumatic micro injector is recommended, considering maintenance. Any type of inverted microscope or three axis micro manipulator can be used. In the following explanation, we'll refer to the three axis micro manipulator as the manipulator. The PMM drive unit is attached to the injection holder and the foot switch is put on the floor. The expendable items required for operation are included in the Piezo ICSI start kit. If you have any questions about the equipment and expendable items, please contact Prime Tech Limited, which has a wealth of experience and achievements. The Piezo ICSI start kit consists of flat tipped injection micro pipettes, pipettes for holding oocytes, and an operation liquid filling device. The recommended operation liquid is fluoroinert FC770. We'll now explain the setting required for operating a piezo ICSI. Please fully grasp all the points to stabilize the effectiveness of the PMM. The quality of the injection pipette considerably affects the effectiveness of the PMM. Many fertility clinics now employ the series of ultra-thin glass micro-pipettes featuring excellent puncturability and quality stability. Fill an injection micro-pipette with operation liquid to a length of about 10 to 15 millimeters. Try to avoid any air bubbles getting mixed in with the operation liquid. Any air bubbles and excess operation liquid towards the back of the pipette should be aspirated by the liquid filling device. In order to stabilize the effectiveness of the PMM, close attention should be paid to the amount of filling operation liquid and avoiding air bubbles getting mixed in. Install the pipette in the injection holder. Insert the pipette into the black O-rings until about 5 mm is protruding. The effectiveness of the PMM will decrease if the pipette is not sufficiently protruding or is protruding too much. Strongly tighten the holder grip until the four O-rings are pressed together to look like one solid block. Firm fixing will stabilize the effectiveness of the PMM. If the cable of the drive unit interferes with the manipulator when you are adjusting the direction of the pipette head, loosen the screw of the drive unit, adjust the direction, and then refasten the screw firmly. The position of the drive unit should be 10 to 15 millimeters from the holder grip. When attaching the drive unit to the manipulator, it should be fixed firmly to avoid any rotation caused by its weight. When using other injection holders, it's necessary to pay attention to the way the pipette is fixed. In the case of an injection holder with a silicon tube, insert the pipette about 5 mm into the silicon tube. The effectiveness of the PMM will be reduced if the pipette is not sufficiently inserted or is inserted too deeply.
strongly tighten the holder grip and firmly fix the pipette. If the silicon tube is deteriorated, the pipette won't be sufficiently fixed, even when strongly tightened, and the effectiveness of the PMM will not be stabilized. Replace the silicon tube if the effectiveness of the PMM cannot be stabilized. When attaching the drive unit to the manipulator, it should be fixed firmly to avoid any rotation caused by its weight. We'll now explain how to confirm the settings up to this stage. This pulsating sound is the operating sound of the PMM. Position the pipette in the microscope field. Operate the injector and push the operation liquid to the head of the pipette so that any air inside the head of the pipette is pressed out. Confirm there's no air left inside the head of the pipette with your naked eye rather than judge from the microscope. After creating a droplet of operation liquid at the head of the pipette, start up the PMM. You can see the way the droplet bursts as the PMM starts driving. If there is no change with the droplet, even when the PMM is started up, it's necessary to revise the setting. By always operating the PMM with the same intensity, you can check whether the setting is correct or not. We'll now explain about sperm immobilization and preparation for the ICSI operation. Stable operability is gained by coating the pipette with polyvinyl pyrrolidone solution. In the following explanation, it's referred to as PVP. A light type of oil is recommended for covering the droplet on the dish. A heavy type will decrease the effectiveness of the PMM. Insert the head of the pipette into a PVP droplet and coat the inner wall of the pipette. The recommended density of PVP is between 5 and 7%. A density of more than 10% decreases the effectiveness of the PMM. Coating of the inner wall is achieved by operating the injector vigorously to repeat aspiration and discharge of the PVP three or four times. This action should be repeated until the interfacial boundary between the operation liquid and the PVP slides smoothly. Let's look at this action under the microscope. Insert the head of the pipette into the PVP droplet. Operate the injector vigorously, moving it along the interfacial boundary between the operation liquid and the PVP. The range for coating using the PVP is the one to be used for sperm immobilization and taking sperms into the pipette, which is about 800 micrometers from the head of the pipette. This should be repeated until the interfacial boundary slides smoothly. When the PMM drive is started, after a small amount of PVP has been aspirated at the head of the pipette, pulsation of the interfacial boundary can be seen in tune with the PMM operation. The effectiveness of the PMM can be grasped from the strength of the pulsation. If the amount of PVP aspirated inside the pipette increases, the effectiveness of the PMM will decrease, so you must avoid an excessive amount of PVP. We'll now explain the three methods for sperm immobilization. The foot switch and the foot shape mark on the screen indicate PMM operation. Pink means preparing for operation and red means in operation. Here's the first method. A sperm is aspirated tail first. Let the PMM start driving with the head of the sperm outside the pipette. 
drive the PMM while operating the manipulator in the direction of 7 or 11 o'clock, so that the tail of the sperm touches the edge of the pipette. Immobilization is completed when it's confirmed that the sperm motility has stopped. Here's the second method. Focusing on the sperm's tail, the head of the pipette is adjusted to meet the end of the tail. Start up the PMM to immobilize the sperm by keeping the head of the pipette touching the tail as it moves around. This is an effective method when PVP is not used for sperm suspension. Here's the third method. After sandwiching the tail of a sperm which is moving around at the interfacial boundary with the oil, the PMM is started up to immobilize it. If the pipette is pushed in too far, it may become easier for the sperm to stick to the boundary or the head of the pipette, so please press to the pipette lightly. We'll now explain about holding the oocyte. Adjust and maintain the direction of the oocyte so that puncture can be carried out from the wide area of the perivitae line space within the range in which the pipette will not travel over the spindle. Next we'll explain about the piezo ICSI operation. The effectiveness of the PMM is affected by the amount of PVP aspirated into the pipette you must avoid using an excessive aspirated amount of PVP. The sperm should be kept at a position about one oocyte diameter back from the head of the pipette. While driving the PMM, the pipette should be advanced to carry out the puncture. If the perivitaline space is narrow, the PMM is driven to about 90% penetration of the zona pellucida and then stopped. The final inner layer is pushed open only by operating the manipulator. When the puncture of the zona pellucida is completed, the hollowed out piece of the zona pellucida will remain inside the pipette. Remove it and at the same time move the sperm to the head of the pipette. Switch the PMM to the one pulse setting for membranes. Push the pipette in and stretch the cytoplasmic membrane. When it is sufficiently stretched, start up the PMM and rupture the membrane. After the sperm is surely injected into the cytoplasm, pay attention not to add unnecessary liquid. Now we'll explain how to deal with an oocyte with a low stretching ability membrane which may get ruptured during the stretching. The action is the same as the previous one up to the point of stretching the cytoplasmic membrane. If the membrane is ruptured during the action, inject the sperm from the position of the pipette without pushing it further forward. After the sperm is surely injected into the cytoplasm, pay attention not to add unnecessary liquid. This has been an explanation about the standard methods of piezo ICSI. Various studies are still in progress regarding intracytoplasmic sperm injection and oocytes with a low stretching ability membrane. While aiming at a higher rate of fertility by incorporating future research results, this is to standardize the use of current piezo ICSI.